In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the 2020 WRX STI S209. I'm going to tell you, you know, everything about the engine, handling, performance, how many are going to be made, estimated cost, all those things. So if you want to know more about the S209, watch this video. Before we get started, guys, if you want to see more Subaru or WRX content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to go in an order of the engine and performance, then handling, then aesthetics, and then all the other information. So to start with the engine, the S209, the 2020 S209, is going to come with a whopping 341 horsepower, an estimated 315 pound-feet of torque, and the engine's going to be running at 18 PSI, which means the S209 is going to have significant gains from the normal WRX STI, and even even the WRX STI Type RA. Now how did the S209 make the 341 horsepower? The STI engineers paired with HKS and put in a brand new HKS larger turbo. They increased both the bearing size and the fan size. This turbo was also running at that 18 PSI, so it's running at a higher PSI. And the STI engineers and Subaru have paired that larger HKS turbo with forged pistons and forged rods. Those were two areas where the STI and FA20 WRX were having issues with the rods and pistons. So, so including the forged option is a huge plus for customers, especially those that are going to tune this car out after. So just alone, these are some pretty significant upgrades. That I'm already interested in the S209, just hearing that it has a bigger turbo out of the factory and forged internals. They've also upgraded the fuel pump and the injectors so that it can actually handle more power and you know be better suited to operate at a higher level of horsepower. They've also completely remapped the engine control unit, ECU, and it's going to be something like we've never experienced before. The ECU, they've said, is mapped completely different from the STI completely different from the RA. It's specific to the S209. It's supposed to deliver a different experience to the driver and really be worth what it's gonna cost consumers. Subaru's also designed a new low restriction exhaust. It's a catback exhaust for the S209. And that's gonna emphasize, one, it's gonna emphasize the boxer rumble, the Subaru rumble, and you're gonna hear a lot more of the engine. It's gonna be a slightly louder car, but it also reduced 17% of the back pressure on the stock STI exhaust, their performance exhaust, and it only weighs 4.1 pounds, so pretty significant weight reduction, and for such a track-oriented car, every little bit of weight that you can shave off makes a big difference. The last really cool, and I think the coolest part of the engine kind of package that the S209 is packing, it's gonna have an intercooler water spray system. So when you're holding your steering wheel, you're gonna have a little paddle behind your steering wheel, and that's going to independently operate the water control spray system. We don't know a ton about it. We know that when you press this button, it's going to spray water into the engine intake, lowering engine temperatures, and what Subaru is quoted on, add five horsepower. And it seems like you can spray this on demand. Now, Subaru hasn't released information of like what the constraints of that are, if you have to be in track mode, if you've got to be pushing the car, if the car has to be at a certain temp, and you're not just like spraying it over and over again. I'm sure there's some fail safes there. But it is really cool that Subaru has included this, and it really transforms the S209 to a track-oriented car. I mean, what other car provides something like that where if you're tracking it or you're really pushing the car, you can do something like that, either to cool your engine air, air intake temperature and, and kind of try to avoid heat sink, or you can add the five horsepower that that corresponding lack of heat sink or you know lower temperature is going to provide. That's just an incredible option. I mean, I'm really excited about that. If I were to buy one of those, I think that would play into like 50% of the decision making. What's incredible here is Subaru definitely has emphasized performance, but they really haven't emphasized the engine performance as they have the handling performance. Everything Subaru is really talking about with this car is about handling and how it feels as a driver, how it corners on a track. They've designed the S209 to be the ultimate track car, and that really comes with handling and tuning of the handling and tuning of the suspension and all of that stuff. So let's look at what they did. Subaru put in STI tuned Bilstein dampers, STI designed and tuned front and rear draw stiffeners, a flexible STI tower bar, and pillow ball suspension bushings. All of these things mean Subaru made a huge emphasis on handling. If all those things weren't enough for you, Subaru then went and worked with Dunlop to put on two 65 millimeter tires and they wrapped those around 19 by nine inch forged wheels. So if you really, if you know a lot about WRXs, those are huge wheels and tires. I mean, those are huge tires. And to accommodate that, Subaru had to put in flared fenders, which actually increased the width of the car by 1.7 inches. Now you might not think that's a lot, but when you're really focused on such a track oriented car and putting power onto the ground and having a good relationship between delivering the power and actually moving forward, that 1.7 inches and those huge tires are a big deal. And the fact that Subaru did like a wide body kit to accommodate this is really cool. It really makes the car look good. I mean, as you can see the pictures, 
pictures that are rolling through this video, the car looks really aggressive, it looks really performance oriented, it looks really, really good. So with all those things Subaru did to improve the handling, the wheels, the tires, all the suspension modifications, Subaru was actually able to test that the S209 put down 1G of lateral acceleration on a skid pad, and that is absolutely incredible for an STI. Beyond those flared fenders, the S209 is gonna have a carbon fiber roof, a carbon fiber rear spoiler, which obviously you can tell it's pretty aggressive, and a carbon fiber front lip under spoiler, whatever you wanna call it, it's a carbon fiber front lip. All those things are gonna provide added weight reduction, and again, with a track-oriented car, that does actually make a difference, but what it's really doing is it's going to increase the rigidity of the car. So especially with the roof, it's really gonna increase the rigidity of the body of the car, and I'm sure it actually made a difference on the track. With the WRX STI S209, only 200 of them are going to be made, 200 are going to come to the United States, it's a United States only release, so yes, this car is going to cost a lot of money, but it's also going to hold its value and do really well in the market. With everybody saying the uh, common funny term, the Type RA was only a gas tank away from 50 grand, it basically cost you 50 grand to buy the Type RA, I'm assuming, and you know, nothing's been released yet, but it's probably going to cost about sixty to 65000 for the S209. But if you're an STI enthusiast and an S208 enthusiast or any of the S-series enthusiasts, sixty two to sixty five grand really isn't that much for what you're getting. It's also going to hold value really well. The car also only comes in two color options. It's either going to be in the crystal white pearl with the satin gold wheels, and that's what it was displayed at at the auto show in Detroit. It will also come in World Rally Blue with satin gray wheels, not the gold. And those are the two options you can buy. All the interiors are going to be standard, and I don't think there's going to be a lot more variation in that. This is an awesome and super cool opportunity for American buyers to get into the S market, to get the S209, and to get something that Japan isn't even getting, which is really just incredible. So one thing that I'm challenging you with, and I've challenged myself with this, is the 0 to 60 mark doesn't make a huge difference, especially when you're buying a WRX or an STI. But it's a huge number and characteristic of a car when a sports car is being sold, especially in the United States. Everybody is focused on the 0 to 60 number. I'm pretty sure the stock STI is running about a 4.6 uh, on the tra on different tracks. I think that's, you know, roughly what they're getting. So what do you think? Drop it in the comment section below. What do you think the 0 to 60 time is going to be for the S209? I'm guessing it's going to be 4.1 or 4.2. I'd love for it to be quicker. It really should be quicker for that price point, but it's also a track-oriented car. Again, it's not a muscle car. I know this isn't a good metric, but it's a metric that you know, whether we like it or not, most of us care about, especially if you're spending 60 grand on a WRX STI S209. So drop it in the comment section below. What do you think the zero to 60 time is going to be? I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching, guys.